Gravit High School and happy National Zoo Lover Day. I'm Brody. And I'm Skylar, and this is the news for the week of April 15th. As many of you know, the city of Bentonville had an unfortunate water problem last week. While working, a contractor hit a main 48-inch water line, causing it to rapture and eventually collapse altogether. Residents who lived in both the Bentonville and Cave Springs area were asked to limit their water use until the problem was resolved. To not necessarily have all of that water, we had to be limiting with our water, but we were still able to open and still able to go to work that day. At approximately 1.51 p.m. today, the 2024 solar eclipse will take place. At the end of six hours, students and teachers will be led out to the football stadium to view the eclipse. Your six-hour teacher will distribute safety glasses, and everyone must wear them while the eclipse takes place. Students will return to class at approximately 2 o'clock. In the last episode, we said the last day of school was May 28th. This information is incorrect. As of now, the true last day of school will be on May 24th. We apologize for the mix-up. GHS Drama will present their spring musical, Once Upon a Mattress, this Friday after second lunch. Go on a journey to a faraway kingdom, where you'll find out what really happened in the age-old story, The Princess and the Pea. So, it's pretty much a retelling of Princess and the Pea, but for a little bit of an older audience, and way more comedic, and it's telling like the true story. If you'd like to watch the show, make sure to bring your $2 on Friday. As many of you know, something very special and exciting is happening today. Let's go to Cole to learn more about it. Are you afraid of the dark? Because today, around 12.30 to 1.50 p.m., a solar eclipse is going to be turning out the lights. But what is a solar eclipse? How are they different, and why does it block out the light? Well, let's find out. A solar eclipse is an event that occurs when the orbit of the moon passes directly between the Earth and the sun. This causes the moon to block out light from the sun and cast a large shadow over the Earth. This shadow follows what is known as a path of totality. The closer you get to the center of this path means that you will be able to see 100% coverage of the sun. For us here in Gravit, we are expected to see around 90% coverage, while other areas like Little Rock will have a full 100% coverage. Starlight eclipses are rare events, the last one having been in 2017 and the next one being predicted to be around 2044 or 2045. According to NPR, out of 228 recorded eclipses in the 20th century, only 71 of these were total eclipses. And in the last 100 years, there have only been 13 solar eclipses that have crossed over the U.S. What makes these events so interesting, though, is that they are all different from the last. For example, this year, the path of totality is wider and the event's duration will be longer than when it happened in 2017. This year, we are supposed to have a total eclipse, meaning that the moon will appear large enough to cover the sun. However, there are different types of eclipses that can occur as well. A partial eclipse means that only part of the sun will be covered by the moon. An annular eclipse is when the moon is too far away from Earth for its shadow to reach the surface when it passes over the sun. There are also lunar eclipses, which occur when the Earth's shadow covers the moon. Then there's the hybrid eclipse, which means that some areas will experience a total eclipse, while others will experience an annular eclipse. This is the rarest type of eclipse. Well, now that we know a little bit more about solar eclipses, make sure to tune in next week to learn with Brennan about how this event went down. Thank you, Cole. Once again, some new changes are taking place in Gravit. Here's Logan to tell us more. To a lot of people, we always see what runs homes and businesses above ground level, including things like electricity and HVAC systems. But what some may not know is what actually runs those things underground. So in this episode of What's Happening in Gravit, we're going to be talking about a massive plumbing expansion. In the past, we talked about the NWA Welcome Center, the roads and sidewalks, and making the town glow more. But with these updates come trying to figure out how all of these things will run and work properly. One of the bigger things that has to happen for the Welcome Center and future businesses is a plumbing expansion. The funds for this project will come from the grant that we spoke about last time. It includes a grant from Womack's office and a three-quarter cent sales tax. The plumbing expansion will hit our daily lives and commutes in mid to late 2024 and continue till early 2025. It will allow more businesses to move out towards I-49 and actually allow the Welcome Center to be built in the location it's needed to be in. The expansion is hoping to go past Exit 100 and connect to the Hiawassee sewage on the other side of the bridge. 
The hope is that this will allow more people to move out that way and also allow more businesses to move into our area. Yes, yeah, so it's the city of Gravit. Uh, it took us several years to actually get the sewer rights for that direction. So now we have the sewer rights that actually go um, across those exits all the way through the community of Hiawassee and out to the other exit, exit 97. The downside of all of these big things coming to Gravit is the population will grow due to businesses needing workers to help run these establishments. So, one of the big questions is, does Gravit have the room to expand and make more room for more people to move into town? The hope is that the roads and plumbing expansions will actually help expand the town of Gravit and make our town more functional for new growth. Currently, there are no new subdivisions being built in Gravit, and there are only 35 homes for sale and 11 homes for rent within city limits. This means that currently, a total number of 46 people and their families could move to Gravit today. Some of us that have lived in the same town long enough and people that have lived in Gravit long enough have seen these changes coming and going. But these changes can and will be good to our community. So tune in next time for what's happening in Gravit. Thank you, Logan. A little while ago, a piece of legislation was passed that greatly affects us as Gravit High students. Zeke took a deeper dive into the act and what it means for Gravit High School. Let's go to him now. Last year, a major law was passed here in Arkansas which aimed to reform the educational system. You may have heard of this law, but do you truly know what it is and what it means for us here in Gravit? Let's take a look into the impacts and controversies surrounding the LEARNS Act. Senate Bill SB 294, better known as the LEARNS Act, was passed on March 8th of 2023. LEARNS is an acronym for Literacy, Empowerment, Accountability, Readiness, Networking, and Safety. It is a 145-page law that, according to Arkansas Governor Sanders, is the largest overhaul of the state's education system in the state's history. One of the ways the LEARNS Act affects teachers is that it raises the starting teacher pay to $50,000 a year. According to the National Education Association, this puts Arkansas in the top three states for starting teacher pay. Sanders said the bill would clear the way for 15,249 teachers to receive a raise to the new minimum, which took effect this school year. The increased starting salaries are an attempt to fill labor shortages at schools around the state. Before passing the LEARNS Act, Arkansas was ranked ahead of only three states for starting salaries for teachers. The minimum salary for teachers in the state was set at $36,000 a year, compared to the national average of $41,770. First-year teachers in a district where the minimum salary is $36,000 would see a $14,000 or 38% increase in pay to $50,000. A teacher with several years of experience and a $48,000 salary would only see a $2,000 or 4% increase. LEARNS also requires a minimum amount of service learning for the class of 2026 and forward. For many years, it's been an option for students to get high school credit for community service, but it's just been an option. And so now community service will be part of the graduation requirement. Although there are some good things in LEARNS, there's a lot of controversy surrounding things ranging from vouchers to phased in universal state funded private schools, and voucher programs. You receive $7,000 from the government. That's $7,000 that now your public school system in whatever area you're living in has now lost. Hundreds of laws are passed each year, but this one impacts us directly. If you're interested in learning more, make sure to visit the Arkansas Department of Education's website where you can view various articles and the LEARNS Act in its entirety. Back to you, Skylar. Thank you, Zeke. Now let's go to Johnny for the weather. Thank you, Skylar. Good morning, Gravit students. I'm Johnny Kelly, and this is your week of weather forecast. Now this week, we're starting off warmer than last week. We've got a high of 75 and a low of 52 on Monday with some partly cloudy skies. And those partly cloudy skies do turn into some rain on Tuesday with a high of 71 and a low of 56. So it does kind of go down with the rain, and you will see it go down a lot more on Wednesday with some thunderstorms in mind and a high of 65 and a low of 48. And then going into Thursday, the rain calms down but doesn't go away with some morning rain and a high of 68 and a low of 44. And then on Friday, the rain goes away and the temperatures come back up a little bit with a high of 69 and a low of 47 with some partly cloudy skies. Thank you. I'm Johnny Kelly, and that was your weekly weather forecast. Back to you guys. Thank you, Johnny. Two weeks ago, we asked you what your favorite place to eat in Gravit was. Let's go see what some of you said. Oh, perfect. What's your favorite place to eat in Gravit? Grumpy's. What do you like to get from there? 
Um, I get a Dreamweaver with vanilla. I get it iced, and then I always get an everything bagel with cream cheese. What's your favorite place to eat in Gravity? Uh, probably El Pulpito. What do you like to get from there? Uh, two cheese enchiladas. So there's that, Phillips 66 gas station, that one. And their hamburgers, like their actual heated up hamburgers are actually really good. And Mountain Dew. Is it El Bohemio or El Bohemia? What's your favorite thing to get from there? Ooh. Um, some kind of fajitas. Smith and Betts. I really like to get their pulled pork burrito. All right, Greg, what's your favorite place to eat and grab it? Sonic. Favorite place to eat and grab it, go. Sonic. Why? It's cheap. It is delicious. What's your, what's your favorite place to eat and grab it? Taco Bell. Why? Um, Because I love it. Does it love you? Oh, yeah. I give it my money. What's your favorite place to eat and grab it? Taco Bell. Why? Because it's fire. It's, it's fire. It's fire. Okay. What's your favorite thing to get from Taco Bell? The beefy five-layer burrito with extra hot sauce. What's your favorite place to eat and grab it? I haven't gone anywhere and grab it. Any, any place you're like thinking about going? There's a Sonic, I know. The Taco Bell. That's A1. What's your favorite place to get from Taco Bell? I like the line stop too. I like to get their Swiss burgers. I don't know what to do with my hands. What's your favorite place to eat and grab it? And grab it? Oh, stop recording. For this week's survey, we want to know what is your favorite planet in our solar system? Well, that's everything for us. I'm Skylar. And I'm Brody. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.